All right. Welcome everyone to the Recycle Right webinar. We're going to be starting in just a few minutes. Glad that you're joining us. Looks like we've got a good number of people on the webinar today, which is really exciting. We really appreciate everyone's interest in recycling in Nashville and recycling right. So really important that we put the correct things in our bins. If you're just joining us, we're going to be starting in a couple more minutes. All right, just a few more minutes and we will start. I want to welcome everyone who is joining us. Thank you so much for being interested in recycling. Still have some more people joining us. Thank you. If you just joined us, thank you so much for attending this webinar. And I hope you, you will find it to be interesting and valuable. We're going to give it one more minute, everyone. Appreciate your patience. We still have people joining us. If you're just joining us now, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to learn about recycling in Nashville. All right, well, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Sharon Smith. I'm an assistant director at the Public Works Department. And <clears throat> once again, I wanna thank everyone for taking time today to join us on this webinar and learn about recycling in Nashville and how to recycle right. It's very important as we um, um, look at the materials we have around our house that we try and make our best decisions and and uh, inform decisions on what we can and can put in our trash and recycling carts. Uh, at this time, I want to introduce uh, my colleague, Jen Harmon, who has uh, worked diligently on all of our recycle right information, including this webinar, and will be sharing with you uh, details of why and how to recycle right in Nashville. Jen, thank you for joining us. Hi, everyone. Um, as Sharon said, I just want to thank everyone again for being here. A couple of things before I get started. Uh, I know a lot of you will have the questions on whether or not this uh, will be recorded and be available, and it absolutely will. We will send that to you um, after uh, probably tomorrow afternoon. You will get an email that will have this recording in it. Um, and you'll also get all of the slides as well. So I am gonna jump right into it. I'm hoping that we can get through this within 30 to 40 minutes so that we've got a, about 20 minutes at the end for questions. Um, at that point, you'll be able to ask those questions. So today we're gonna talk about why it's important to reduce, reuse, and recycle, how recycling actually works here in Nashville, and then how you can recycle right. So first of all, why are we even recycling? Why do we have recycling programs? Here in Nashville, 80% of our waste goes to landfill. Uh, we only recycle about 12% and then compost even less of that. You can see on the chart here that, especially through fiscal year 17, 18, and 19, our, the amount of trash that we uh, were generating was going up, that's the green line, and the amount that we were recycling was going down. Um, so that's not the trend that we want to see. We want to be recycling more, but it is important that we are recycling right. Now I said 80% of that waste goes to our landfill and about 48% of Nashville's waste goes to a landfill that's going to close in about seven years. Um, so that means at that point we'll have to send our waste even farther away, which costs more, it uses greater emissions, um, and is uh, just not the most sustainable way that we can be managing our waste. There are a lot more sustainable ways, even though landfills are regulated by the EPA to minimize their impact on the environment. There are simply better ways that we can manage our waste here in Nashville. So that uh, brings us to the reduce, reuse, recycle, the, the pyramid of waste here. 
Uh, I think most of you have probably seen this before, have heard of the three R's, uh, but it's important to know that the three R's come in an order for a reason, reduce, reuse, recycle, and it's part of this waste pyramid here. And it's based off of what strategies around reducing our waste are the most environmentally preferred. Um, so what are the things that we can do that are the most sustainable? Um, and those R's have expanded beyond reduce, reuse, recycle. You can see at the top there, rethink, redesign, re refuse, and there's a lot of other R's that have been included in this pyramid. Um, but the, the basics stay the same. So at the top of that pyramid, refuse items, things like plastic straws, paper plates, plastic utensils, things you don't actually need, refuse them. Reduce, uh, I think this image is one of my favorites because I, you see a lot of produce uh, in pack that has been taken out of its natural packaging, um, its peel and then packaged in man-made packaging and that's simply just not necessary. So reducing packaging is a great way to uh, reduce the amount of materials and goods that you consume, um, but also reducing plastic grocery bags or water bottles and getting reusable ones. Reuse. Take old items that you might consider throwing away and find a new use for them. Repair is also a great way to reuse items. I think we're often in a bit of a throwaway society where once something breaks, you throw it out and then get a new one. But so many items can be pretty easily repaired. And with YouTube these days, you can pretty much repair anything. Um, so looking for ways to reuse and repair. And then if any of those strategies, if you can't use any of those strategies, then look to recycling. Recycling was at the bottom of that pyramid that we just looked at for a reason. Um, it's really just the, the next best thing that you can do just above landfilling. So all of these other strategies are, are simply a little bit more sustainable. So in terms of managing Nashville's waste, we want to look at all of those different strategies. And here in Nashville in 2016, we embarked on a zero waste master plan. So we can look at how we as an entire city can reduce our waste. So the goal of the master plan is to divert 90% of our waste from landfills. And we're gonna do that through increasing recycling. That's why we're here today to talk about recycling. Food waste reduction and recovery. So finding ways to, to donate food and also composting programs throughout Davidson County. If you are interested in composting programs, I'm not gonna go into food waste too terribly much on this presentation, but if you are interested, we will be having some composting workshops later on this summer. Also adopting recycling and recovery programs for Nashville's construction and demolition waste. There's a lot of construction still going on uh, and that's a lot of waste that's produced that we could do better at managing that. And then of course, strengthening our public education and outreach programs. It's exactly what we're doing here today to try and really get out and educate the public about recycling, about the strategies that they can do to reduce their waste and what programs are available to them to do that. All right, so let's jump into recycling. Recycling is simply the process of collecting and processing materials that would otherwise be thrown away as trash and turning them into new products. So we're taking this somewhat more linear process of extracting a natural resource, processing it into a raw material and manufacturing it into goods and products that we use every day. And then once those products have uh, ended their kind of useful life for us, we put them in collection programs and that, li that linear process sends it right to landfill. Um, with recycling, we're able to close the loop on that process and really create um, that more circular economy that you hear about a lot these days. Um, so using those, collecting those materials, those products, and being able to turn them into something new and useful for us. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how uh, we recycle here in Nashville. Um, we've got two programs with Metro Public Works. We've got our curbside collection program. Um, so that's all of this green kind of um, green area that you see. And then we've also got 14 sites throughout the county where you can drop off recycling. That includes 10 drop off sites and four convenience centers. So this is where you can take your recycling in curbside, our materials that we accept are paper and cartons, cardboard, food and drink cans, and plastic bottles, jars, and jugs. Now, if you've been to, um, now all of, excuse me. Um, so 
all of these materials, if you're looking for more information on them, I'll give you a resource towards the end, but to, to really break it down, paper and cartons are things like newspaper, junk mail, the little plastic window is not a problem. You can still put that in your recycling, magazines, and then food and beverage cartons. So things like a soup carton or a milk carton, those types of things, Tetra packs, if you've heard of those before, that can all go in with those paper and cartons. We also accept cardboard, so cereal boxes, toilet paper roll tubes, paper towel tubes, and of course, cor uh, cardboard boxes and corrugated cardboard. Food and drink cans, we really are focusing on those metal and steel food and drink cans. So a lot of those other metal products, they need to go somewhere else, such as our convenience centers will take things like scrap metal or baking pans. But in our curbside program, you can put food and drink cans in your cart. And then our plastic has been updated to bottles, jars, and jugs. And we really focus on these three materials, these three types of plastics, because they really are what's being recycled here in Nashville. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But focus on plastic bottles, plastic jars, and plastic jugs for your plastic items only. And of course, in our curbside recycling, never put glass in your curbside recycling. Glass is only available uh, for recycling at our recycling drop-off sites. So our drop-off sites have the same materials that we accept. Of course, it also includes glass. And I've recategorized these here so you can see the different bins that are available to you because when you go to a recycling drop-off location, all of your recyclables need to be sorted. And your curbside bin, everything can go all in, mixed materials commingled together, whereas at recycling drop-off locations, they do need to be separated by their different, um, different categories. So the bins that are available to you are gonna be the paper and cartons. There's gonna be a cardboard bin. Um, we get a lot of questions about well, I'm not quite sure if it's cardboard or if it's paper or which bin I should put it in. Um, a lot of times with snack boxes or cracker boxes, things like that. And I like to use kind of a rule of thumb. If it's brown on the inside, it's cardboard. If it's white on the inside, it's paper. And that's just for like those kind of paperboard boxes. Uh, however, if you are ever in doubt of whether something is cardboard or paper, if you're going to a drop-off location, always just put it in that paper bin. Food and drink cans and plastic bottles, jars and jugs all go together in one bin. And then glass is a completely separate bin. It's really important to keep that glass completely separate from all your other recyclables. In Nashville, and to recycle right, Knowing that those materials are the only things that you can recycle in our traditional recycling program and our curbside and drop off, that's the number one most important thing is knowing what we accept. So only recycle those items that uh, I just discussed in your recycling bins. Also, your recycling should be clean, empty, and dry. You don't need to run it through a dishwasher. It doesn't have to be pristine, sanitized, disinfected by any means, but you wanna make sure that if there's any food material that's on, that, um, on your containers, all that food, all that liquid that needs to, to come off and then those materials need to be dry. That way you're not contaminating any of your other recycling. You don't want all of that stuff getting on other materials, especially paper and cardboard because it can make those materials no longer able to be recycled. So you wanna make sure it's clean, empty and dry. A good rinse out is usually all you need. And then for our program, we ask that you place recycling loose in the recycling container. So don't put it in a bag, uh, in a plastic bag and seal it up. We'll talk about the sorting process in a moment, um, but all that bagged material, the sorting facility cannot process that. So unfortunately, if you bag your recyclables in a plastic bag, it'll simply end up in a landfill. So make sure that you place that recycling loose in your recycling container. So now that you have an idea of our basic program, where you can recycle and what you can recycle, I'm gonna get into a, a lot more detail. And I'm gonna discuss recycling based on kind of two different categories from two different approaches. First, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the mechanical side and how the material is actually processed. Uh, and then we're gonna talk uh, just briefly on how the material is actually sold because those two different factors are really what determine what can be recycled here in Nashville and what cannot. So this is an overview of the, uh, of the sorting facility, the recycling facility here in Nashville. Now for both our curbside and drop-off recycling, we contract with a company, Waste Management, that 
takes that material and sorts that material and then bales it up to be sold to manufacturers that will turn those items into new goods. Uh, so for our curbside recycling, like I said, it's all mixed materials, all mixed into one container that then comes here to go through this process. And you can see there's a lot of machinery going on. Uh, and so I've got a little video that will take us through the process through the actual sorting facility, and I'll describe how this actually works. So you're going to see a lot of machinery, people, and technology that goes into this process. So this is one of our trucks coming into the facility. We weigh our trucks on the way in and the way out so that we can determine how much recycling we're actually collecting and sending to the facility for our records. Then that truck comes around back and dumps out all of its material into basically just a really big warehouse. So all of the material gets dumped out and you can see it's just a mix of all different kinds of things, all those different materials that we discussed and then some materials that also shouldn't be there like that plastic bag. And then all of these materials are fed onto a conveyor belt. Uh, they use you know, equipment to take it over to essentially a conveyor belt and what's called a drum feeder that shakes everything out to send it to the sorting facility. And you can see at the very top here is where it comes out. I'll use my pointer here. So this is where it came in and then it goes through. I'm going to pause this for a moment. So it comes into the facility and you've got staff here at the very beginning that are sorting through all of that material looking for things that can't be recycled. Primarily things like plastic bags, um, bagged recyclables that can't um, be sorted by the process, and other trash materials that shouldn't be in um, our recycling. So you can see it then comes over. These are cardboard screens and you can see these big machineries and um, as when I hit play again you'll see that they're moving and I've got this in a little bit of slow motion, but they're moving very quickly. And you can imagine plastic bags, plastic film, bubble wrap, things like that are going to get tangled and caught and wrapped around that machinery. Um, so that's the number one reason why those materials, they simply are not able to go through this process. And um, when they do get wrapped around that machinery, they have to come in and cut them out by hand. So they have to shut down all of the equipment to be able to um, pull those materials out and get the process going again. So you can imagine that that costs time and that costs money. After it goes through the cardboard screens, you've got more workers that are sorting it before it goes to paper screens. So pretty much a smaller version of what we just saw to sort out the paper. And you can see those folks up at the top, it goes through the screen and then it comes down onto these two lines where more workers are pulling out all the trash materials, anything at this point that just isn't paper. Because everything that comes off the end of that conveyor belt, that's what's gonna be sent to the baler to then be shipped to a manufacturer. So after it goes through those paper screens, Everything else, you've basically got your plastic recyclables and your metal recyclables that are left. And they come up this uh, conveyor and they come down, they get shaken out, and then they go to a new piece of equipment that our contractor has added to their facility. It's a digital sorter that uses technology to be able to visually identify plastic, a certain type of plastic, um, plastic bottles, anything made with PET, that number one that you see sometimes on recycling. Um, so PET is able to be seen by this machine here and then an Airstream is used to shoot it out so that it can be uh, sorted separately. So it's able to specifically identify that material. So you can see it all gets shaken out and this is a great opportunity to see why we asked that shredded paper not go into our recycling. This is that sorter and you'll be able to see the materials shooting out. Um, but all that shredded paper you saw, we've already passed the paper screens. So that shredded paper has fallen through those screens and is unable to be sorted. You can see all of it over here at the top. So anything that um, was sorted, I'm gonna pause it real quick. So the sorted material is shooting out here, going into its own bay, and then everything else, the rest of the plastic and metal containers go along a conveyor belt, and the plastic is then sorted by hand. So they're identifying materials, just visually looking at them to uh, determine which pile they go in and where they can be recycled. Metal cans, we have a magnet on a conveyor that pulls all the steel cans out. You can see steel lids as well are fine. And then the aluminum is pulled out through another type of magnet to sort out the aluminum material. 
but anything that's not sorted at this point, so there's a lot of materials on those conveyor belts that didn't get sorted, that's trash. And that's what you're seeing here as well. This is a whole pile of trash that's been pulled out. A lot of it being that plastic bag and film material. So all that unfortunately shouldn't have been there and is being sent to landfill. Now this is uh, the cleaned material, the sorted material is being headed to, uh, or is heading to a baler. So that's where it's gonna be compacted. You can see that here, it gets compacted. It gets bound with some steel wire into cubes and then they'll load it on to trucks to be sent and sold to manufacturers uh, to be turned into new products. So again, we're back. I just wanted to show this diagram one more time so you can see how that's, uh, how that's happening. Um, that uh, when you get these slides, that digital sorter is not included in this diagram at this time. Um, so that would be right here. Uh, this is an older diagram. We haven't updated it yet, um, but that's where that would be located. But otherwise you can see this process. Um, now for our drop-off locations, all of that material, as I mentioned, gets sorted into those different bins. So that makes recycling, the process of recycling and sorting those materials more economical, a little bit more cost effective because it doesn't have to go through this entire process. It only has to go through part of this process to be bailed and shipped. So that simply reduces um, costs for, for that recycling process. Um, now, one material that you didn't see was glass. Glass is, has to be kept separate from all other recyclables. We emphasize do not put your glass in curbside recycling um, or any recycling where you're putting in mixed materials where you can put in a number of different recyclables. Glass should always stay separate because glass recycling, when glass breaks up, if it's mixed with other recyclables, especially paper and cardboard, those shards can get stuck in the paper and in the cardboard and that lowers the value of those recyclable materials. Um, also, you can imagine, you saw all that equipment, glass would be incredibly dangerous going through that facility and dangerous to the workers that are there. So we ask that you not put it in your curbside recycling and always keep that glass separate and take it to a drop off site so that it can be managed um, appropriately. Okay, so we are going to make this a little bit more interactive and do a quiz. Um, so if you have a smartphone nearby or a tablet and want to go to www.menti.com, we've got a little quiz that we're going to do for you. And then I'm going to talk about some barriers to recycling regarding the sorting process. So when you get to menti.com, if you enter the number 809854, it'll pop up our quiz. I'm going to click to it and you'll still be able to see this code at the top of your screen. Yes, so you can still see it. So go ahead and start answering which items can you recycle in your curbside cart? All right, we'll give it just one more minute to let people answer. And also we're gonna do another one of these in a few minutes. So once you're done answering, keep that browser window open, set it, uh, set it aside, because we'll be returning to it for another one. Okay, I think we are just about there. Uh, so let's look at the answer. So the correct answer is the aluminum drink can and the laundry detergent jug. Those are both able to be recycled in our curbside program. So now let's talk about why these other items aren't. Um, also, great job. Uh, looks like pretty much everybody got this correct. So let's go back and talk about why. So the reason why these items are not recyclable really has to do, um, a big part of it just has to do with the sorting equipment and the technology that's available. Um, so as I mentioned, I think there was only one person that uh, had mentioned the plastic bag. Don't ever put those plastic bags in your curbside bin. Unfortunately, you can see here, this is a great image. This is not from our facility, but um, you can see how those bags just wrap around all of that, uh, that, that equipment that's rotating through the sorting equipment. Um, so keep those plastic bags out because it can really impact and break the, the sorting machinery and equipment that's at the facility. Um, so that's one big, um, big barrier to um, recycling. 
And then also, if the machinery simply can't sort it, you saw how big those are. A lot of those uh, shredded paper shreds, they had just fallen through the equipment. And by the time we got to the very end of the process, a lot of that material was still on the conveyor belt. And it just ends up, those are tiny little pieces, just end up falling through all the machinery or just um, and end up on the floor and unfortunately are swept up and sent to landfill. They're just not big enough to be sorted through this process. Um, so we ask that shredded paper not go in your recycling bin. In the past, we uh, have suggested putting it in a paper bag, but we do not suggest that anymore because we have found that those paper bags, they'll get ripped open and then the shredded paper will still go everywhere and fall through the machinery. So unfortunately, it's just not effectively sorted that way. But we do have compost drop-offs at our convenience centers. So we recommend composting your home shredded paper um, and, and that's another way you can also if you do backyard composting you can do it there as well and same with those plastic caps if you have uh, plastic containers put the plastic caps back on those plastic containers otherwise plastic caps should just be, go in the trash bin we don't want any loose caps uh, as those loose caps they're too small again to fit, go through the sorting process and they just aren't going to be recycled unfortunately um, so if the machinery can't sort it, uh, it really just isn't recyclable. And then I mentioned, I'm just reiterating glass again. Um, it's just not sortable through that process. So please take it to a drop-off site and do not put glass in your curbside bin um, for multiple reasons, um, but especially because it does lower the value of that material. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the technology, the machinery side. Let's talk about just very briefly kind of the economic side of recycling um, and why that really impacts what we can and cannot recycle. Um, and it really comes down to um, this basic idea of you have your supply and your demand. And if there's not a demand, um, then it doesn't matter how much material you have, it can't be recycled. So all of these materials that we put in our bins, they have to be turned into something else. And if there's not a manufacturer out there that wants to use that material and turn it into something else is not doing that, then unfortunately those materials simply aren't recyclable. Uh, and one thing that we have found most recently and why some of our plastics especially have changed is that even though some of those plastics were being accepted and, and sold through some of those bales of recycling that you saw previously, those manufacturers were never actually using those materials to recycle anything. They were just getting trash that they then had to sort and throw away. So we have worked very hard to whittle down our materials, our accepted materials, to only include those items that we know are actually being recycled here in Nashville and not ending up in, in the landfill later on down the line. So that's why you now see plastic bottles, jars, and jugs, which might be a bit of a change from what you've seen in the past. Um, but really, it's, it's just a very simple concept. If the man, there's not a manufacturer using that material to make new things, then unfortunately that item just isn't recyclable. And those number three through number seven plastics is really a great example of that. All those plastic materials, number three through number seven, don't ever put those in your bin because we know, unfortunately, here in Nashville, they're not being recycled. And then when it comes to number one and number two plastics, they're highly recyclable materials, but only those plastic bottles, plastic jars, and plastic jugs. Now our recycling, uh, there's also, we do get a lot of questions about, is our recycling going to China? Uh, as there have been a lot of news stories about that. Our recycling, we have a very robust industry here in the Southeast. And so our recycling stays here in the Southeast and supports our economy. Uh, so these are just some examples of the places that some of our materials are going to and what kind of things those uh, materials are becoming. Um, so our plastic bottles, those are being turned into things like carpet and fleece clothing. Um, of course, our glass, it is absolutely recycled. We get that question a lot. Folks think that we're picking up glass to send it to landfill. Unfortunately, there have been some other areas around the country that have done that. We are not, and our glass is absolutely being recycled and being turned into other bottles and containers as well as fiberglass. Um, so all of our materials stay here in the Southeast. Something else to just note is that materials can't necessarily be recycled. Not all materials can be recycled infinitely. So when you're recycling your plastic items, all plastic degrades over time. So that plastic material can only be recycled one or two times. When it comes to paper and cardboard, 
Um, it's, we get a question a lot about paper towels. Even if they're clean, they haven't been used to wipe your hands or things like that. Um, if a paper towel is clean. Unfortunately, that material has often is made from other recycled paper. And at that point, the fibers have just become too small and can't be recycled anymore. So those paper and cardboard items, as they get recycled over time, they do degrade as well. Um, but they can be recycled a few more times than plastic. Uh, but with aluminum and glass, these are items that can be melted down and recycled over and over and over again. So an aluminum can can turn into another an aluminum can over and over and over again. So make sure, um, especially with aluminum, if you have an aluminum can, just always recycle all of your, your food and drink cans. They're just incredibly recyclable and highly uh, usable items for recycling. With that, we're gonna do another pop quiz and then go into some more, talk about some more barriers. So going back to that menti.com, pull this up here. All right, we're gonna go on to the next one. Which items can you recycle in your curbside cart? We have a toilet paper roll tube, cream cheese tub, a plastic cream cheese tub, a plastic peanut butter jar, a pizza box with some grease stains on it, and a plastic produce container. So which one of these can go in your curbside cart? Excellent. All right, I think we might have gotten everybody. Oh, a couple more. Okay, so to see the correct answers, the toilet paper roll tubes are recyclable and the peanut butter, the plastic peanut butter jar is recyclable. Um, let's talk about why some of these other things are not. Going back. Okay, so the pizza box, the cream cheese tub, and the clamshell container, why are these not recyclable? Um, so in the manufacturing process, we talked about barriers regarding the sorting equipment. So these are barriers regarding the actual manufacturing process and the sale and use of these recyclable materials and why things might not be recyclable from that perspective. So. I mentioned this before, the material just simply isn't used for any new products, those three through seven plastics. So dairy tubs were something we did include in our program previously, um, but we have worked very closely with waste management to find out, our contractor to find out whether or not those materials were actually had a market here in our region to be sold. And unfortunately at this time they don't. Um, so if we don't have manufacturers using that material, then it unfortunately just can't be recycled in our program. Um, so, oh. so then the next one, the material can't actually be used. So this is where that pizza box comes in. Um, and also things like paper or, um, excuse me, potato chip bags or Pringles cans or some of those things that have a mix of different materials that are used in the packaging. So that material, if uh, for the example, the pizza box, you can't separate the grease from the cardboard, which makes, unfortunately, that cardboard, they're not able to use that greasy, the greasy bits. Um, so if you have a piece a pizza box that has a clean top with no grease on it, that part can be recycled. But if your pizza box looks like this one covered in grease, the equipment that they use to process that material just simply can't sort that grease out and they can't use that product. Aluminum foil is one we also used to have in our program, um, but no longer accept because we found out that when there's not a whole lot of aluminum actually in aluminum foil, and when it goes to be processed, when it goes to be melted down with all the aluminum cans, unfortunately, it just burns up in the process. So instead of melting, it just burns away. So it's not actually being recycled. So on any of those um, mixed materials I mentioned as well, the potato chip bag, K-cups, things like that that have all kinds of different materials mixed in together with them. Unfortunately, the processing is not necessarily available to be able to sort that material, to separate that material, and it just can't be used in, in the way that it is. And then also manufacturing equipment that can't process the material. So 
This is where your takeout containers, now takeout containers also usually have food on them, which is why we don't, one of the um, reasons why we don't accept them, but also there just isn't manufacturing equipment that is uh, processing this material. So a lot of these berry clamshell containers, for example, that you see are a number one plastic, uh, very sim which is the same as uh, your soda bottle or your water bottle. And we get the question, well, why can you recycle one number one plastic, but not another number one plastic? And it comes down to the equipment it takes to process that material. So even though they're made from the same type of plastic, they're not made the same way. They've got different additives to them, different chemical additives. So they simply are just made differently. And so when it comes to breaking them down to reuse them and recycle them, you need different processing equipment uh, and different technology to be able to process that material. So right now in our area, there's really not anybody that's doing that with these types of containers. There are some out in California, of course, um, and hopefully there will be more in the future. But at this time, there's really only a handful of areas in the entire country that can even take these items at this time. Um, so, but as new technology is, uh, is developed and as new manufacturers come online to use these types of products, we'll be able to hopefully at some point add them back into our program. Okay. So I do want to mention, I feel like right now we're in a situation where people are a little bit doom and gloom about recycling. Um, I know we've reduced our number of accepted materials, which makes it feel like we're recycling less. But the reality is, is that we are just doing a better job of recycling right, and recycling is absolutely essential. It is part of our economy. 40%, I found this from Bloomberg Business, 40% of our raw material demand is met by recycling. So that's a lot of manufacturers that are using recyclable materials to make new products. And if you think about, I put the toilet paper up here because I think we all know right now how important toilet paper is and a lot and how essential it is and a lot of toilet paper is made from recycled content. Um, so recycling really is essential. We need to continue to recycle. It's an important part of our zero waste master plan. It's not the only part um, to help reduce our waste, but it's, it's an important part and we just need to, to make sure that we're doing it right. So to help make sure that you're doing it right, if you are a curbside, uh, if you do have our curbside service, we are continuing to do our OOPS audit tags where we go through and look at your, we do a spot check of your recycling to see if there's anything in there that shouldn't be. If, you, if we do find something, you'll get one of these tags that will indicate what you've put in there that shouldn't go in there. And then um, once you've removed all those materials, you can call us at Hub Nashville at 311 or 862 5000 to then get your recycling, uh, get an additional pickup. But it's really important that if you ever get one of these OOPS tags, that we're not digging through all of your recycling, we're only checking at the top. So if you take out some materials that we listed, but then there's something else in there that is listed on this sheet that can't be in your recycling bin, but we just didn't see it, and you leave it in there, uh, then we're going to take your uh, take your curbside recycling cart. So we don't want that to happen. We just want to educate you on what you can and cannot recycle. So just make sure that if you get one of these tags, whether or not we have marked it, take out anything that's listed on this tag that you cannot recycle. And most of them are things that we've gone over today um, in with the addition of the hoses, wires, chains, or electronics, no yard waste, no clothing or linens, things like that. Some resources for you. So you will get these slides uh, at the end of uh, the presentation. We'll be sending you an email with these slides. And on it, there's this Recycle This, Not That, How to Recycle Right in Nashville guide. We have this on our website, but this is an active link. So when you get this, you'll be able to click on this page and it will actually take you to our guide. And I just wanna show you very quickly what's in here. We've got just some additional guidance some reminders about curbside and drop-off recycling. We have some basic information with some tips on each of our product, our, our material categories, um, some top tips for you. And then also we've got a few additional top tips that talk a, a bit more about what we've mentioned. Labels, uh, we get that question a lot. You can leave your labels on your recycling. Make sure things are at least two inches or larger. You don't want those small items. It goes over the 
OOPS program, but then also we have a very extensive list that will continue to grow over time with uh, materials that, and it'll tell you whether you can recycle it in curbside, if you can recycle it in drop off, or if you can't recycle it at all. If you can't recycle it, we'll tell you why you can't recycle it and then provide you with some options um, of other things you can do with it. So like this one, for example, the pizza box, you can compost your pizza box. Um, so you can take that to one of our drop off locations or tear it up and use it in your backyard compost as well. There's also some other recycling options out there um, or donation options. So it lists all of that kind of stuff here. Um, and of course the plastic section is much longer uh, than all of the others. So there's a lot of things in here and this is going to grow, like I said. So we have that resource for you. We also have, um, I just wanna mention that our drop-off signs have changed, have been updated. We also have new stickers for your curbside carts um, that's available uh, right now. It's available at our um, administration office um, on Fifth Avenue in East Nashville. And then we've also got our website that's been completely updated as well with all of this information that also has some posters that are downloadable in four different languages um, that have our basic guidelines to recycling, right? So those are some resources that are available to you. And then I think we have time to play our final game of will we pick up your recycling cart? So this game is going to pitch you against one another. You are competing. The faster you go, the uh, more points you're going to get. Okay, so it looks like people have joined. Oh, excellent, excellent. We're gonna start the quiz. Okay, so this, It'll give you a couple seconds with the picture, which item cannot be recycled in your curbside cart. And now select the cream cheese tub, the plastic peanut butter jar, or the shampoo bottle. Oh, 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 oh no. Okay. Uh, all right, it looks like most people got this answer right. That's fabulous, the plastic cream cheese tub. Let's see who's in the lead. Looks like Croc is in the lead. All right, our next one. Which item cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? Is it the newspaper? Is it the juice carton? Or is it the shredded paper? Sorry. Shredded paper, that is the correct answer. Fabulous. Looks like most people got this one right as well. Who's in the lead? Oh. This is a very close game. All right, Croc is still in the lead. We've got two more questions to go. Which item cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? The faster your answer, the more points you get. Toilet paper tube. Greasy pizza box or the cereal box? Which one of these is not recyclable in your curbside cart? All right. Okay, looks like people are doing a good job. Greasy pizza box is the right answer. Oh boy. All right, Croc is still in the lead. And our last question, the aluminum can, the tuna can, or the baking pan, which cannot be recycled in your curbside cart? What? All right, awesome. You're all right. That baking pan should not go in your curbside cart. Who is our winner? Congratulations to Croc, yay. But it all looks like everybody pretty much got these answers right. So that is fabulous. 
Um, and just, I've got two, a couple more slides and then we'll open it up to questions. Uh, so just very quickly, there are some other recycling options out there for things we don't accept. Plastic bags are a big one we get asked about. If you go to plasticfilmrecycling.org, you'll be able to find out all the different types of plastic filmy things like bubble wrap and some of that other stuff that you can recycle and where you can take it. Most of that stuff can be taken to a grocery store, a big box store, um, and they'll have a bin for recycling your plastic bags. Also, there are styrofoam drop-offs. Um, Publix, I know, has styrofoam drop-off for some of their product, for some styrofoam products. Um, so that's also an option, as well as I do encourage if there are other things out there that you have and you're not quite sure what to do with them, but you feel like maybe they could be used for something, look at doing uh, donations. There's reuse donations or, um, you know, we get plastic hangers and things like that, um, take those things to um, Goodwill or another donation option. And then the last thing I will end on is I know a lot of folks get overwhelmed, especially with the amount of plastic that's out there and not being able to recycle plastic. And so I just offer these options for you to uh, do more around it to help support that circular economy um, and make recycling uh, even better. Um, there's a lot of zero waste legislation out there. Here in Tennessee, there is a, um, in the Congress, they are in the House, they have a ban on plastic grocery bags at the state level that's um, working its way through. On the federal level, there's a lot of legislation out there, um, but the Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act is one um, that's, uh, that's worth looking at um, that could do a lot for a lot of these plastic items. Then also always remember to look for uh, recycled content and the things that you buy that helps really uh, make that circle work, make that um, circular economy work um, and buying from sustainably minded companies and then um, get involved. There's a lot of things that you can do locally and, and groups here locally. And of course the breakfreefromplastic.org is another way to get involved um, on an international level as well around this. Um, so with that, we've got 15 minutes uh, for questions. I do have this information up here, of course, if you want to share anything you learned today, hashtag RecycleRightNashville. Um, and we've got um, some resources for you here. And also, we've only got a few minutes for Q&A. So if you want to have a longer session or have more questions, email me. We have, um, are looking at setting up a session to talk specifically about issues around China. Oops. Um, as well as setting up some discussion forums just to, for some Q&A. So email me about that. And with that, Sharon, what are our questions looking like? All right, here's one. Glass bottles with screws with screw on tops. Do you keep the lid on or throw it away? Any glass product that you have, glass, um, if it's a, a jar with a large enough metal top, you can take that metal lid and you can toss that in the metal recycling and the glass and the glass recycling. But any of those things like corks or um, cat like beer caps or any kind of metal screw top, the smaller ones, those should be removed and thrown away. All right. How about tofu containers? No, unfortunately, um, those are not recyclable. Uh, that's one of those materials that just isn't being used by manufacturers to be made into something new. How about those uh, tofu containers that are more like um, clamshells and they are, um, or uh, what we would call thermoforms and um, maybe have a number one or a number two on them? Uh, so those are uh, some, any of those products, those are, unfortunately, they're just not recyclable. It takes a whole different technological process to process that material, and there just aren't manufacturers here in our area, area doing that. So those, unfortunately, should go in the trash. All right, how about this? Do we need to take the plastic tape off cardboard boxes before recycling? If you can get some of it off, please take that off, but um, you don't have to, you know, pick off every last piece, it's gonna be okay if there's still a little bit of tape left on there. All right. Um, are there plans to distribute uh, the revised recycling rules to Davidson County households? Yes, yeah, so we've done a lot of work to, um, to provide more information on materials. Um, we do hope in the future to be able to send out um, a postcard that's got this updated information to every household in Nashville. Um, of course, as you all probably know, we are in a bit of a, a budgetary kind of um, 
holding pattern right now, um, but as soon as we can find the funding to be able to do that, we will. Otherwise, we've been doing a lot of outreach to groups that can, can share this message and share this information um, to try and get it in, as, uh, in front of as many people as possible. So if any of you are part of a community group or a neighborhood group uh, and would like to share this with uh, that group, please feel free to email me because we can also set up a, a private um, or a group, another group opportunity to go through this webinar as well. Very good. How about vitamin bottles? Vit oh, that's a very good question. So vitamin bottles, look on the bottom of them. As long as they're um, a bigger bottle and they have a number two on them, then those are recyclable in our program. Uh, for prescription bottles, those orange containers, those are typically a number five container and those are not recyclable in our program. But most vitamin bottles, check for that number two, but they should be um, good to go. All right, very good. Options for styrofoam. I would just like to say, don't get it, but go ahead, Jen. Um, absolutely, if you can avoid getting styrofoam, that is the best thing that you can do. There is no evidence at this time that styrofoam will ever break down. Um, so once styrofoam, always it's styrofoam. However, there are options at Publix to take things like egg cartons um, and a few other styrofoam options. There's also a company out in Laverne that will take, I believe it's EFP Core, and I think there is a link to it on our website at recycle.nashville.gov um, that will take some foam packing material. Very good. How about uh, yogurt tubs? Yogurt tubs, um, again, that's one of those number five uh, plastic uh, materials that is just not being recycled in our area at this time. All right, somebody missed your comments on shredded paper. What are our options? Compost, we really encourage you to send it through, uh, to, to compost it. Um, it really, it can't be recycled. It doesn't make it through the sorting process when you put it in the recycling bin. So we ask that you leave it out of the recycling, but we do have composting at our convenience centers, um, compost drop-offs that you can take it to if it's just your household shredding, um, or if you have a backyard composter. Again, we're gonna do a composting workshop um, coming up here uh, in the summer. So if you're interested in getting started with that, um, that's also an option as well. Um, and you can also look at our website at compost.nashville.gov if you are interested in backyard composting. Um, but that is the option that we really push you for. Here's a great question. And this, I feel this, uh, my house is the same way. We generate much more recycling than trash. Why is trash picked up once a week rather than twice a month? Sharon, can I give that one over to you? Oh, <laughs> okay, that is a very good question. Well, first of all, um, current Metro code, the health code requires that uh, residential waste be picked up uh, once a week. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that there is organic material in it, um, or it tends to be organic material in it, which would, you know, develop odors, attract flies or other rodents and things. Um, but as part of our long-term zero waste master plan, we are looking at options like um, every other week recycling and on opposite weeks, every other week trash collection. Not only would that be more efficient, um, but it would uh, reflect, I think, the more accurately what people have in their bins at home. And, you know, way more than 50% of the material I get at my house can be recycled upwards closer to probably 75%. So these are things we're looking at for the future. Um, but I really like the way you're thinking because I put my bin out um, maybe once every three weeks, sometimes longer, depending on what I've got going on. It might be a little more often, but you think about it, there really isn't that much that has to go in the trash. And I've got another one for you. What types of plastic go in the bins at grocery stores? Or did I ask you that one already? What type of plastic goes in the bin? Oh, at the, the drop off. Grocery, stores, grocery yeah. stores. So that's really just your plastic. It's, it's film recycling. So plastic bags. Um, there's some other items that can go in there. I believe bubble wrap can go in there. Uh, I know right now a lot of people are getting things shipped to them. So if you get something shipped to you and it has that big puffy, puffed up kind of plastic pillows, 
um, that kind of film after you pop all of those pillows can can go in there. Um, but really, your the best thing to do is to go to plasticfilmrecycling.org. That will give you all the guidelines for those types of drop offs and what can and what cannot go in them. All right. Um, what is the best way to find out about upcoming webinars and class offerings? Do you put these on social media? We do share them on social media. We have a presence on Facebook, Nextdoor, Twitter, and Instagram. All of these will definitely be posted on Facebook and Nextdoor. We also have um, our website, recyclingeducation.nashville.gov, where all the registrations will be listed. So um, we'll let you know when we have uh, new opportunities available. For anyone that did attend these webinars that we're doing this month, um, when we set up our uh, our next series discussion series that I mentioned about with more Q&A opportunities um, and discussion topic opportunities, we'll be sending you all an email as well. Um, our Get Rowdy Recycle newsletter comes out once a quarter and we also use that opportunity to share other information. So you'll be added to that newsletter. If you don't wanna be part of it, the first time you get one, you can unsubscribe. Um, we don't send out uh, stuff super regularly, so you're not gonna to be too overwhelmed, but we'll also share it there as well. So we'll make sure that you stay informed on any upcoming workshops, um, especially that composting workshop. All right, and yes, we had somebody else wanting to know when uh, to send information on the next composting presentation. So you've just answered that. And Jen, that is our last question. Oh my gosh. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> we still have time. Put in your questions yeah. if you now have this them. Is, uh, this is a good question and I'll, I'll answer this one. Does the recycling system pay for itself in Nashville via material sold or does the city, city have to put in money? So there's probably no recycling program anywhere in the world that actually pays for itself. Um, there, the, the fact that, um, or the, the thought that recycling generates a lot of money um, is just actually not accurate. When you take into account the collection, the cost for processing and removing contamination, there is um, value in recyclable material, which is why there are markets but that recyclable material has to be separated. It has to be, you know, um, all the contamination removed has to be bailed, it has to be shipped. So revenue helps offset part of the cost, but it will, uh, I don't know of any program where it offsets all of the costs. So in Nashville, we have a revenue sharing agreement in our contract. So we get a percentage of the revenue and that does um, help offset part of the cost. Okay, what about the uh, inside liner in a cereal box that is wax coated? Inside liner. So cereal boxes, I don't know of a cereal box. I've never met a cereal box that couldn't be recycled. Um, so the box itself is recyclable. Um, I think in the past we've had some language that talked about wax coated cardboard that is really, it, it's a little bit misleading because it was a very specific type of product that just isn't really used anymore. Um, and it was, so a waxy coating doesn't necessarily mean it can't be recycled. Um, it's just a whole different product. So those cereal boxes are definitely recyclable. Of course, the, um, the plastic bag on the inside that holds the cereal is not, so remove that. Um, but the rest of the, the box should be recyclable. All right. Any thoughts on batteries? Uh, batteries, yes, you can take those to any one of our convenience centers. Um, they, of course, should not go into your recycling bin. Um, that can cause a lot of problems at the uh, sorting facility, including fires. So please don't put those in your recycling bin, but you can take them to our household hazardous waste drop-offs um, that are available at our convenience centers. All right, that was good. Um, would Tennessee or Nashville ever do a five cent deposit for cans or bottles that other states have? There have been uh, some attempts to do bottle bills at the state level. Um, that's what those are called. They're called bottle bills um, that have not been, unfortunately, they haven't been successful in the past. Um, so typically you see those at the state level rather than at the local level. Um, our zero waste master plan does include a lot of um, looking at, at banning certain items and, and enforcement around banning those items. Of course, cardboard right now is 
technically illegal to put in your trash. It has to, it needs to go in that recycling bin. Um, so there, there's some opportunities there, but we're regarding the bottle bills and those five cent deposits, 10 cent deposits, um, that's really something at the state level that just unfortunately has not had a lot of support in the past. It's a very it's good, good answer. In the future, though. What Definitely about magazine? Legislators know that, you know, for sure, if you want that, reach out to your legislators. Absolutely. Um, what about magazines? Absolutely. Magazines. Now, I, I know a lot of my magazines, they don't put them in the mailbox anymore. They throw them, they're in a plastic sleeve um, that are thrown out onto your driveway. Um, so make sure that plastic sleeve is removed and anything like that. Um, the magazines are absolutely recyclable. All right. Oh, somebody is disappointed in the number of quiz takers. Only 40 quiz takers. Is that how many people tuned in in all of Nashville? No, that there were more. And this is our second webinar. So we're spreading out the love. <laughs> and I just want to shout out to Bob Fletcher, who has helped to answer some of the questions, including the one on uh, alkaline batteries. Most of you um, would be shocked to know he is the hazardous waste guru for the state of Tennessee and knows more than anyone else. Bob, we're so glad you were, uh, you were on with us today. All right, a couple, couple more here. Um, hardback books or paperback books? Paperback books are good to go in your recycling. Hardback books, uh, if you can rip out the paper, you can recycle the paper part, but the binding, um, that hardback is not recyclable. Of course, with books, I always encourage donation of books. Um, you can, there's plenty of options for that, but if not, um, yeah, the paper part can be recycled, the hardback cannot. All right, we still have a few more, but we're kind of running out of time. Okay, uh, is there one more good one? Well, here's a good comment on hardback books, donating them to a library. Absolutely. All right. Uh so uh, with that, I do just want to remind everyone, we're going to have this um, available for you, the recording, um, as well as the slides. You'll get that email to you tomorrow. We also are going to um, look through all the questions, and we are developing a full Q&A um, that will make sure any questions that didn't get answered today will um, answer those questions, and those will be posted on our website at recyclingeducation.nashville.gov um, so that you can reference any question that you might have had that didn't get answered today. So we'll have that available for you if you can give us a, about a week to do that. Um, usually we do get a lot of questions, but um, we'll have that available. Um, and of course, like I said, if you have any other questions, you can always email me at jen.harman at nashville.gov. And thank you so much for joining us today.